Hello, this is Wampire. Okay, for today's lesson, we're actually not going to be using the stick because last week I got a comment where a person said, we don't always have the stick, so could you please uh, show us more uh, empty hand stuff? So I'm going to talk about that. All right, so let's start off with empty hand. Uh, the first step is to do what we do with the sticks and literally translate that to empty hand. So it's a 100% direct translation to empty hand. So imagine that you're holding a stick and you're doing the exact same things. One, two, three, four, and five. That is the first step. The second step is to now modify the direct translation. So it doesn't matter if it's the five angles of attack or it's some other, you know, uh, count drill or it could be a heaven six. Whatever it is that we do with the sticks and now you're doing the exact same thing with empty hand, we're going to adjust it, modify it into uh, empty hand combat. So, you know, that could be as simple as if we're doing uh, the five count drill. Okay, so number, f number one, we're going to be doing this. So you could go, what is this? Is this a punch? Okay, is this a hammer fist? Is it a claw to the eyes? And then number two, am I doing a chop? Am I doing a forearm strike? You know, or am I doing a back fist? Number three, is number three a slap right here? You know, into the rib area? Am I punching? You know, so you start to change it a little bit more for empty hands. So that is the second step. Okay, so for the third step, and this is something that this is the way that I teach and I strongly emphasize is to practice the boxing. So you're, you're doing the jab, the cross, the hook, the uppercuts, right? So to mix that together with this, two, three, four, five, to mix that together. So when we do that, we're going to have something like a jab, jab, and a number one strike right there. Once we do that, we have something unique. We have a hybrid. So now the next subject that I want to talk about is that the person said we don't always have a stick and that is absolutely correct. But the way that I teach the Eskrima, this is 100% for improvised weapons and you know the only way to get good at improvised weapons is to actually do that. So if you don't have a stick, maybe you're on vacation or something, then you have to see that as an opportunity and go, this is great, now I could actually grab something and try it out. Okay, so for example, right here, I have this thing right here, but just imagine, uh, this is just a rolled up cardboard, but this can be a rolled up magazine, all right, uh, or some type of newspaper that you fold it up, okay? So when you have something like this, grab it and now actually try it. One, two, three, four, five, you can try having six, you can try it in reverse grip, okay? So you can do all this kind of practice and see what it's like. You can, you know, see what kind of striking you know, how does this feel? You know, so play around with it, but you want to experience it, okay? In real life, I wouldn't use it this way. I would fold it up even more, make it extra tight, and you might actually have to hold it more in the middle. If you hold it way out here, it might start to get undone, okay? And it starts to spread open, so you might have to hold it a little bit higher like so. So this all comes from actual experience that you need to, you need to do it. All right, so now the next thing I want to talk about is this, which is basically a common screwdriver. Uh, even though it's fairly common, when you actually grip it, it does feel pretty different from the sticks. So it does get some getting used to. So from here, you know, because we're using it in a completely different fashion than we normally use this, you know, you got to practice. Do the forms, two, three, four, and five right here. You could do heaven six type stuff, okay? And... Another thing about this is you want to get something like a cardboard box and actually see what it's like to puncture it for real, to actually cut it and even try reverse grip with it. So you do your moves and actually test it out like on a cardboard or like a wooden piece of target and see, what, see the capabilities of this thing. That is also very important and testing out the grip as well. Okay, so this next one right here is a comb, which I know a lot of people have in their homes. So... Uh, this is something that you could practice a lot of the Eskrima type moves that we do and uh, What I like about it is the length actually the length is you know It is on the smaller more compact size So it's going to help prepare you for using something like a Kubotan or a knife or a tactical flashlight So I think this is uh, this is pretty cool for self-defense wise if you rake this onto somebody's eyes and you could also use it to hook the nose, the, the mouth, the lip, 
in the ear. I mean, this could definitely cause a little bit of distraction for sure to help you once again run away. I would definitely rather have this than zero in a self-defense situation. All right, so next is this thing right here. This is actually a glass bottle. Uh, it's a salad dressing because uh, I don't drink, but we always hear about people talking about using a glass bottle in a bar fight or in a street fight or something like that. But the question is, have you actually felt and practiced with it? Do you know what it feels like? Okay, so you need to get that experience and actually feel it because, you know, it is glass, so it's a little bit on the heavier side. The leverage is kind of different, you know, to feel how it moves and how it handles in your hand. Is it going to slip out? You have to experience that. Glass is smoother. And because of the condensation and stuff, it can be slippery. So those are all things you need to practice. Uh, I personally wouldn't shatter it and then try to use it. If you have done that before, it does take practice to actually shatter the bottle correctly because if you don't, it end up breaking like way down here and then you're not only going to have much left to hang on to, uh, you could also hurt your own hands. There are ways to crack the bottle to where it, it becomes an actual weapon for you, but there are also plenty of other ways that you crack it wrong and now you got nothing. So that also comes with uh, the practice as well. All right, last but not least, uh, this is a short towel, but this can be substituted with a t-shirt or even a jacket. Uh, something like a jacket is gonna be harder because it's heavier, but this falls into the category of flexible weapons. And as you know, we practice uh, the sticks using it like a flexible weapon. We practice uh, nunchuck type movements with it, and that's really gonna come in handy going to this now. So right here, you know, just grab it like so, okay? If you don't have a small towel like this or something, just go ahead and grab a t-shirt. And we got to know what it feels like. We have to have some experience. We have to practice with it. So from here, you're going to know or you're going to realize that this kind of movement is very, very natural for a flexible weapon. If you try to do something like this, it's not going to work out as well as this kind of motion right here. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so from here we can mix this up with, you know, more nunchaku type strikes like so, you know, like this, and then mix it up with the circular motions, you know. Okay, and then from here we can easily go into more snappy strikes like so. All right, so anyway, uh, if you don't have sticks, no problem please improvise. Take that as an opportunity for you to try out different tools so you can work on improvised weapon skills. But at the end of the day, I still do highly recommend sticks. So please try to find some sticks, uh, various lengths, uh, and try to find two. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and take care folks.